This time, 30 years ago tonight, we we're just beginning to see the scope of the damage from the Loma Prieta earthquake. In the end, more than 27,000 structures were impacted. The property damage ran into the billions, of course, and as KPIX 5's Juliet Goodrich shows us, Loma Prieta led to a seismic shift in how to protect our buildings. The Bay Area skyline is full of colossal new structures. We're packed with people. But the big question, are we ready for the next big one? Very strong. At UC Santa Cruz, 30 years ago, the quake hit late in the day. Watch what happens to the lights. At Candlestick Park, the 1989 World Series. The lip of the stadium was just kind of rolling like a wave. 15 seconds, that's all it took. I don't know how the hell we're going to get them out. The Loma Prieta quake collapsed a freeway in Oakland. Two kids up there, they, they really hurt. And buckled the Bay Bridge, opening a huge crack to view the water below. In this building, which was a large three story apartment building. The Marina District in San Francisco sustained major damage. Gas and water pipes broke. Historic buildings fell, and yes, KPIX felt it. There's another aftershock, just rocked this building. But this was not the big one. For that, you need a magnitude eight or greater along the San Andreas Fault. And we're long overdue. Just ask structural engineer Evan Reese. Earthquakes are a real problem. We know that. We can't sugarcoat the risks that we face in California. But inside this former naval structure on Mare Island in Vallejo, an innovative technology is shaking things up. Today, we are building buildings all over the world that are not damaged by earthquakes and can remain functioning after earthquakes in the center cylinders. Victor Zayas is a structural seismic engineer. So we developed this triple pendulum isolator. Zayas invented a system to help critical structures ride out massive earthquakes and remain standing and functional. What we need functioning after an earthquake is our hospitals, our transportation systems, and our electric power sources. His secret weapon involves these blue concave metal bowls. They're friction pendulum isolators. They act like very sophisticated shock absorbers. It absorbs the movements of the ground during an earthquake. The products are built on site. Each one is then tested using this powerful custom-made device. It will simulate a magnitude 9 earthquake. We'll be seeing this earthquake ground shaking movements here moving back and forth plus or minus four feet. The technician threw a switch and the ground lurched into action. In the device, different pendulums begin to swing. The motions lessen the quake's energy from getting transferred to the structure and thus damaging it. There is no limit to how strong an earthquake our isolators can, can take. The new Apple spaceship in Cupertino is resting on top of 700 massive blue saucers. Steve Jobs himself demanded them. The technology is also in use at four new Bay Area hospitals, including San Francisco General. They played a pioneering role. Only a small number of buildings in the U.S. use this technology. Zayas ships most of his products to earthquake-prone countries like Ecuador. Three years ago, a 7.8 quake hit the South American country, causing widespread damage. The bridge, using his technology, continued to function. That bridge saved many lives by being able to evacuate all the injured people from that city. As for Mr. Reese, he's co-founder for the U.S. Resiliency Council, the mission to design buildings to better withstand quakes. Reese remembers he was at the 89 World Series. We learned what could have been, that it could have been much worse. What's at stake? A lot. A recent federal study found a quarter of all buildings throughout the Bay Area would suffer significant damage after a magnitude 7 earthquake. In San Francisco, Juliet Goodrich, KPIX 5.